Lindsay Edwards is on. Right. Roger, I think I saw you. I'm here. Great. Susan Tucker? I'm here. Okay. Jay? I'm here. Great. Sally? Here. Okay. Barkley? Here. Great. Marty? Hi. Marty Williamson? No, Marty. Okay. Uh, and Jean Lewis? Is Jean with us? Okay, so I'm just going to go back over the ones I didn't hear from. I don't believe Frank, Kenneth, Marty, or Jean is with us today. Is that correct? All right. All right, so we do have a quorum, so that's great news. And everybody understands that we are on YouTube today being recorded. Um, um we will are we live yet okay we're gonna we're gonna be ready to go live we are. okay yes yes ma'am we are live okay so all right at this point i will entertain a motion on the minutes um, and if you'll, to approve the minutes of the previous meeting madam chair okay and if you'll please state your name for the record jay makes a second all right Thank you for your motion and second. Is Are there any changes or discussion? All right, hearing none, if you would please say aye if you vote to approve. Aye. 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 All right, and are there any opposed? All right, hearing none, the motion is approved and the minutes will stand as is. Uh, next, we will hear from our finance committee. Okay, give me just a minute to bring up the finance. All right. Slides, please. Okay. Finance, you can go ahead. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, our 2016 SPLOS collections to date are approximately $631 million, and that is approximately $100 million over projection. And our current expenditures to date are approximately $600 million. Does anybody have any? This is Roger Sandworthy. I have a question. I guess I was surprised that the collections in April were um, as high as they are, considering that the county has been shut down. Are we really looking at uh, March data, or is this actual April collections? No, this is actual April collections. We thought the sales tax would have been a lot lower than that, but uh, businesses being shut down. So this is Bill Volkman, uh, finance director. So this is the money that we did collect in April, but you're correct. It's just for March activity from the businesses. It does take some time for them to remit to the state and then receive to the county. So there is a little bit of delay where we expect to see the bigger decreases when we receive the May collections at the end of the month. Okay. All right. Thanks for clarifying. Does anybody else have any questions? Madam Chairman, this is Bill Carver. Just one quick one for Bill Folkman, if I could. Uh, Mr. Folkman, do you have even a ballpark idea of what kind of dent we may see in what might be a normal May collection percentage-wise? So, sir, what we've done is we've run a couple different models, and what we've done is basically compared those to the recession, the last recession levels. And we ran those through the remainder of the 2016 SPLOS. So just to kind of give you an idea, is during the 09 recessions, the tax collections averaged around $9 million a month. So this last month of April, we collected $11 million. So we ran it, the scenarios to say if we collect $9 million for the remaining months of the 2016 SPLOS, we're going to be in great shape. 
we're going to still finish with a very significant surplus. And just to give you an idea, it will eat into the, the surplus that we have to date, but you'd still finish with a $70 million surplus. Um, we even took it a step further to say, what was the lowest month that we've ever collected during the 09 recession? And it was seven and a half million. To be ultra conservative, we ran the same scenario, assuming we collect $6 million a month for the remainder 21 months of collections. We would still finish with a surplus in the 2016 SPLOS of roughly $7 million. So for our purposes for the 2016 SPLOS, even if it became the below the worst case scenario that we saw during the 09 recession, this SPLOS would be in great shape because of the strong economy that we've had to date. So we still anticipate having to uh, allocate some additional the surplus collections to projects as we as we finish up the hundred sorry seven hundred and fifty million dollar budget for this. Uh, but it did call us to take stock in what we're looking at for the 2022 SPLOS. Uh, initially we had discussed uh, averaging 135 million per year. Uh, this SPLOS averaged or we budgeted 125. So because of the uncertainty moving forward, we did take a step back and scaled it back to the 125 million that this SPLOS has, which is really based on the 09 recession levels. So we, we did want to be a little bit more conservative, but to answer your question, we really don't know exactly what the impact is, but we wanted to be prepared for worst case scenario. So we said, if this fell to 6 million, which I don't think it's going to consistently drop to that level, this SPLOS will still be in great shape. Excellent, thank you. Welcome, sir. All right, any further questions? All right, hearing no questions, we'll move on to our next item, and that's from Ackworth. Okay, give me just a minute, and I will start the Ackworth presentation. Okay, Ackworth, we're ready. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Almodovar. I'm the assistant to the city manager at the city of Ackworth, and I'm here to provide some insight into our SPLOS projects and some of our recent accomplishments. Uh, next slide, please. So this spreadsheet right here is our projection of project schedules, is what we use to kind of track each project of when we're going to complete them uh, with regard to each fiscal year. We also track our year-to-date numbers as far as total project costs and revenues. And on the left-hand side is the list of projects for the 2016 SPLOS. The top half are projects that have already been completed or under construction. The bottom half are either the ongoing uh, projects such as miscellaneous paving, as well as projects that are yet to be completed. Uh, we have two major road projects that are in engineering right now to be completed uh, next year, which is the Northside Drive Road Improvement Project and Dallas Street. Next slide, please. So as we delve into this, I do want to mention that uh, last year was a huge year for us as we completed a lot of our public uh, downtown infrastructure and capital outlay projects. And this one right here is one of, that, one of those examples. So the Lemon Street realignment from the railroad to Cherokee Street. As you see on the left side is a before picture of what this area used to look like. As you see, Lemon Street was an L-shaped road that ran into the intersection with Cherokee Street and School Street. On the right is the after picture of what the site looks like today. As you'll see, we uh, widened Lemon Street with turning lanes. We extended it all the way to Taylor Street and to our Logan Farm Park area, which is 140 acres of trails and green space. We also installed the roundabout that you see there on Cherokee and School Street to alleviate uh, traffic flow and traffic circulation. And we also added more public parking. That's, what, that's definitely a, a, big, a big component to any downtown area. Next slide, please. Taylor Street Extension. This was another major road project that was completed last year. As you see on the top left is what Taylor Street used to look like. And as you see, you see a big wooded area well, on the other side of that woody area was a big residential development, which is called Mitchell Hill. So what we wanted to do was tie this residential development and those residents down to our Logan Farm Park and our Parkside District, as you may call it. 
So the middle picture there is the actual road as it was being completed last year. When we installed sidewalks and stormwater infrastructure. And on the right is the ribbon cutting that took place in September. Now I do want to mention that um, vacant land adjacent to the road where you see some dirt and green space was excess property that was purchased as part of this road project. And what we did is we bid out that land and the uh, the bidder that was selected has now is now finalizing four 2,000 square foot craftsman style homes overlooking our Logan Farm Park, which has been a great addition to our downtown. Next slide, please. Okay, give me one moment on the yeah, no problem. slide progression. Ms. Summer, were you trying to annotate on the slides? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me see if I can just remove that so that I can progress. Okay, thank you. You can continue. Yes, uh, this slide is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, with SPLOS funds, we purchased police vehicles, the 800 megahertz radios, and the video systems and the PD cars. So these are just some pictures of those systems and the cars that we have purchased. Next, please. All right, now moving on to a, an athletic facility. This is one of our baseball fields in our sports complex, which is Newberry Park. On the bottom left, you'll see a before picture of what Newberry uh, parking lot used to look like. As you see, it needed a lot of work. So on the right is the final product after SPLOS. Uh, as you see, we repaved the parking lot, added parking spaces, curb and gutter, an indoor batting facility, and restrooms to that. Uh, this has been used by uh, a lot of kids and, and tournaments and league play. And, and people really love these additions and the new look of the ball field. Next slide, please. Now to the big one, the community center. As um, many of you may recall, this is where we had the last update back, I think it was in August. Uh, this was a joint SPLOS project with the county, a $12 million project. Uh, the before on the left is what the area used to look like before the community center. And you know, this was something, a need in the community. There wasn't an area like, an, a facility like this in this area of the community. So on the right is the final product, the actual community center after SPLOS. Uh, and I do want to recap that this is a 44,000 square foot facility with two full court basketball courts, 12 hoops, an indoor walking track, and an indoor banquet hall meeting facility that can seat up to 300 people or more. And it overlooks our Tanya Creek and we call it Tanya Creek Overlook. So the next couple of slides are going to kind of outline the different areas of the community center. This is our lobby, which is a, a great open space, and that is our customer experience team where people sign in and register, and we have office space there as well. This is our two full court basketball courts with our walking track. It still has that new gym smell even after a year. It's been used by thousands of visitors for open play basketball, pickleball. We've hosted gymnastic tournaments, volleyball tournaments. And it's just been a huge success and we're very proud of this facility so we definitely like to show it off next slide please well, again this is the banquet hall the tanya creek overlook which can seat over 300 people we've hosted weddings uh trainings meetings state of the city here um so it's been a great event venue and uh we're very proud of it next slide please so Right now, currently underway, we have the Robinson Street Road Improvement Project. This, this road is a major road because it's kind of on our lakeside district, uh, right in our downtown. And it's actually where we evacuate people after the big 4th of July festival. So these pictures were taken about two weeks ago as the project is under construction. Uh, what we're doing here is we're realigning the road, we're widening it, we're widening the sidewalks, installing curb and gutter, and some stormwater infrastructure. And uh, we anticipate that this road project will be completed by July of this year, weather permitting. Next slide, please. Now we just kind of go into the ongoing maintenance uh, SPLOS funds that we use as we evaluate different areas of the city. Uh, miscellaneous paving, this is Cowan Road, one of the major thoroughfares into the city that was repaved last year, as you see by the picture. 
And again, we evaluate areas that need to be repaved throughout the city. Stormwater repairs, pretty self-explanatory. We identify infrastructure that needs upgrading or maintenance, and uh, that's our crew working hard uh, fixing a stormwater infrastructure. Next slide, please. And sidewalk repairs. You know, we identify areas of the city that sidewalks either need to be elevated or, or redone in some capacity, and our crews go out there and, and fix that. So with that, that kind of wraps up the projects. Uh, I do want to say that we are about a million in over collection of SPLOS funds, but obviously with COVID-19, we are anticipating some type of shortfall. However, as Bill mentioned earlier, there is a lag in effect. So we, we expect to see this shortfall in the next uh, check, probably at the end of this month, but we are planning accordingly uh, and we're doing our best to mitigate the impact. So with that, our team is here if you have any questions. Anybody have any questions for Ackworth? All right. Thank you, Ackworth. You Thank stay you. safe. Thank you. Um, next, we'll hear from Smyrna. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Moore. I'm the city engineer for the city of Smyrna. And on behalf of the other SWAS team members that you see listed on the first slide, I would just like to thank all of you for the opportunity to uh, give you an update on where we stand with our 2016 projects. So if we can start on the next uh, slide, it is kind of a big picture overview of our budget. Uh, total budget uh, as it stands now is 94.7 million. Uh, to date, we've spent 81.3 million of that, which is uh, about 86%, which gives us approximately 14% remaining. We move on to the next slide. It kind of gives you a, a breakdown of how those funds have been allocated as far as the types of projects. As you can see, the, the majority has been have been allocated towards uh, transportation projects, 84 million. Uh, Four million for parks and approximately six and a half for public safety. The next slide talks about uh, how many projects we have completed to date. Twenty-six. We have one that is currently under construction that we'll highlight in just a moment, and we have two that are currently under design. Those two are uh, a Church Street, which is a, a traffic calming project with new. Uh, curb and gutter, new sidewalks, uh, uh, new traffic calming measures, and then Dell Road, which is really at this stage in the kind of preliminary design phase. Uh, the next project or the next slide is uh, our Windy Hill Boulevard concept. Uh, this is the one we've kind of all been waiting for here in, in the city of Smyrna. Uh, it is a uh, boulevard design, which is a four-lane express uh, expressway between South Cobb Drive and Atlanta Road with two uh, local access lanes as well. This project is a joint project between the city and Cobb County. We're very excited that it's finally getting started. Uh, it broke ground at the beginning of May. Baldwin Paving was awarded the initial uh, contract, and we are anticipating a three-year construction time frame for this project. Uh, we get questions quite frequently from residents, you know, what is this going to look like? It's kind of hard to visualize just on a 2D uh, drawing, so we recommend that people go to the website listed here on smyrnasplos.com. It gives you a um, kind of a bird's eye view and a driver's eye view as it drives through the project. So. If you want to have a feel for what this is ultimately going to look like, we recommend folks go to that website. Uh, the next slide is a roundabout project that was completed in April of this year. We're very excited about this project. Uh, in its existing condition before the project took place, it was an area known as Six Points. It was essentially a six-pronged intersection with a traffic light. Functionality was very poor. So we are very excited. Uh, the neighborhood has received this very well. It acts as a measure of traffic calming, and it certainly has increased uh, the functionality of that intersection. The next slide uh, talks about the resurfacing that we were able to complete with SPLOS funds in last uh, fiscal year. We were able to complete almost seven miles, a little bit short of seven miles of, of road resurfacing. 
and uh, uh, the, uh, there's a list of the roads that we were able to complete. And again, this is something that's received really well from, from the neighborhoods that are impacted. We get lots of requests from, from folks wanting their neighborhoods repaved. So we're excited to be able to provide that service through SLOS funds for, the, for our neighborhoods. The next slide talks about sidewalks. Um, we were able to complete several sidewalk projects with SPLOS funds. Our focus has been on uh, around schools at this time. Uh, we completed a, a fairly significant sidewalk project uh, around Campbell Middle School, which was received very well. We're very excited about that. The next slide is uh, the North Cooper Lake Bike Park. Um, the project consisted of the addition of bike trails and the bike skill area that you see there in the slide. The project is complete and is open to the public. And we were very excited about this one because it really gives our residents that live more on the, the southwest uh, side of the city an opportunity to, to have a better park experience. And then the last slide is our Gann Road Bridge Rehab that was completed earlier this year. It was a, uh, a, a bridge that was in need of repair and we were able to get that completed uh, with SPLOS funds earlier. So that's our uh, SPLOS in a nutshell. And if you guys have any questions, uh, hopefully I can answer them. If not, then we'll be able to, uh, I'll make some notes and get you the answers at a later time. So thank you. All right, any questions? Hey Kevin, this is Jay Cunningham. Hey, uh, on the I'm curious on the sidewalks because I'm on a few projects. Are we making the sidewalks uniformly wider or not? How are we doing that? So the, the sidewalk projects that we have focused on have not been uh, widening existing sidewalks. It's been the addition of new sidewalks, and, and it's typically when we have enough right of way, our sidewalk standard now is five feet. Okay, so if we're going up one that we're going to redo, are we widening it to five feet if we can, if we're allowed that? If we can, yes, but again, there's oftentimes there are right-of-way uh, restrictions that would prevent us from doing that, but if we have enough right-of-way, we have the room, we will. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Yes, sir. Madam Chairman, Bill Carver. Kevin, just a quick question. The, uh, the transportation you spent a goodly portion of the budget the response money that you've had on that and that's probably understandable but um is most of that resurfacing type of things or are there going to be transportation improvements that will hopefully reduce the amount of travel time and make traffic flow more smoothly and that kind of thing well, the, the biggest part of that 84 million that you saw on the pie chart, uh, I would I don't know the exact percentage, but the majority of that I would say would fall in the Windy Hill Road Boulevard project. And keep in mind also that 84 million that you saw is uh, 18 million of that is, is Cobb County participation in the project. So, um, yeah, the majority of that is Windy Hill. There's a significant portion of that that was the roundabout that we highlighted earlier. So. I think to answer your question, yeah, the, 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 um, a lot of that is to improve the traffic flow through the city. Thank you. And I don't have those numbers specifically broken down, but if that's something that you, that you need, if you guys would just you know send me an email and then we can put those numbers together for you. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Any further questions? All right, I uh, don't hear any, so thank you, Smyrna. And we'll hear next from Parks and Rec. Hey, everybody, this is Tom Bills. Um, I'm, I'm kind of an old dog, and I appreciate uh, this new trick. Um, bear with me while I try to, try to do my best with it, though. Um, next slide, please, okay. Uh, this is our um, the summary of our 2011 projects. Um, we had, again, 172 projects in, across 50 parks. Um, we've we've completed 99% uh, of those projects. We're still working on a, a, a couple of other ones, so finishing up a couple other ones. Um, if you could do the next slide, please. This is one of those. Um, Harrison Park has received a lot of a lot of our um, attention earlier in the program. Field six and seven, however, were, the, were are the last two that we were able to put um, LED field lighting on them. 
Um, as you've heard from me before, we, we really like the new generation of LED lights. Um, they use a lot less energy, they last longer. We don't have to replace the, the fixtures as often, the bulbs or fixtures as often. And even if we could, they're harder and harder to find. Those metal halide fixtures are kind of being phased out. They're expensive and difficult to find even. So this is our, the fields six and seven baseball fields down at the bottom of the park. Um, and we're able to do LED field lights on those. Um, they're, they've been ordered. Um, they're on their way from, from uh, being shipped here now. So as soon as, they're, as soon as they arrive, we'll have them installed. Next slide. Now into the 16 program. Um, you'll notice that the, the, from the past, um, the number of projects and the number of parks um, tends to increase um, in the 16 plus because we have a category called, uh, that we use for general park improvements. And I'll show you a few of those, but we're able to replace roofs and infrastructure, other infrastructure and parks sort of in a, in a general thing. That's why the number of projects and parks changes in the 16 program where it never it was pretty static in the, in the 11 program. But from the total allocation of 70, just over 76 million, we've spent about um, just under 52 million. 78% um, of the projects are complete, 12% construction underway, um, still in design on 9% and future projects uh about one percent so next um here's a couple examples too um we have a, a joint project with the with the um cobb county school district uh and the first one of these that we're doing is at is at fuller's park um this is at the bottom of the park if you're familiar with it um we drive all the way um, past a variety of baseball fields and tennis courts um that building in the background here is the recreation center in front of that is a multi-use field um, that's used for uh, for baseball. You can see a baseball field and uh, that small building with a green roof. That's the football um, a, um, center that uh, uh, it's a restroom and concession building that we finished um, earlier in the program. Um, this this field though um, is big enough to allow some some rectangle sports on it. So um, the Walton High School foot, uh, football team. Uh, feeder teams and their lacrosse and junior lacrosse team practice and play some games here. We're going to um, do synthetic turf um, on this field and, and redo the lighting with LEDs. So we're going to keep those ball fields. It's, it, we're going to, we're going to replace, basically replace all of the turf in this oddly shaped uh, field with, with synthetic turf. So we're going to keep the baseball fields with different colored infields, all turf, all synthetic turf, but different colors for the infields, um, new bad, new backstops and that sort of thing. It's lighted for all these different sports. It'll be it'll be striped for all these different sports. Um, we're going to do it so it doesn't look like a play, um, but you'll be out different color for different sports, and um, it, uh, it'll turn out um, pre it'll turn out really well. It's um, the engineer that's done the design for us is Gaskin Surveying, their local Marietta firm. The design is complete. It's in permitting now, and we hope to advertise for construction in June. Next slide. Um, this is the Mountain View Community Center uh, um, in the center, sort of upright, upper part of that, uh, the picture, um, yeah, where the arrow is, thank you. Whoever's controlling that, I appreciate it. Um, that is the, uh, the, the community center. It's a metal building. It's been there for a while. Beyond that, in this picture, Sandy, Sandy Plains Road, by the way, is, is along the left. The library is basically um, where the drone was sitting when it took this picture. It's just below us. The art place is to the, is to the right, just out of the picture. Um, the new development that's um, that's just to the to the east here at the top um, was where Mountain View Elementary School was, and in the past we were able to share their parking. Um, when this commercial development went in, we lost our access to that parking, so we've been um, designing and, and now under construction with replacing the parking uh, that will serve both the art place and the community center. Um, the contractor is Bartow Paving. We'll be adding um, 68 new spaces, um, and we're hoping for a com an early June completion. Um, I have a different view of it on the next slide. Um, that's just looking at it back um, from the other direction. The new parking you see there is, with, is from the new development, um, but that's private, so we you know we're, we we couldn't depend on our, our ability to sort of use that. That's the the art place, which is the um, the, sh the building to the left, and the library up there is up to the top under the word community and the header. And across Sandy Plains Road over there, that's the Mountain View Aquatic Center, just to orient you. But we're almost done with this project. It'll be done. Um, they poured, uh, they started pouring curb and, curb and gutter today, and we should be out of there by um, the first week in June, weather permitting. 
Next slide. Um, the Mud Creek and Hubert soccer complexes, um, you've heard me speak about those in the past um, where we've done some synthetic turf uh, replacements there. Both of those uh, fields are, or both those parks, I should say, are primarily soccer. Um, and they were, they're about 10 or 12 years old. So the parking lots were still in pretty good shape structurally. Um, they were starting to show their age um, with some surface cracking and that sort of thing. No, no, no um, base failure or anything like that. So we, we came in here and we were able to do in both cases um, some top coating uh, to, to rejuvenate the asphalt, um, you know, get the, get the striping back in shape. And, um, and uh, at, Mud, at, sorry, at Hubert in particular, we had some, um, some older speed humps of the sort that, you know, even in a Humvee, you'd have to slow down and kind of sneak your way over. Those are now replaced by speed tables, which you can take at the 15 mile an hour speed limit that we like to have in the park um, and not, um, you know, crush your, crush your oil pan underneath. Um, but those are, it's much better. And uh, they also serve as um, safe places for pedestrians to cross. Um, so this photograph here is the completed Hubert soccer complex lot, and the next one shows Mud Creek. Um, we everybody see, everybody loves both of these parks, and so now we've we've just made another improvement there. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is at Hyde Farm. Um, you know, we've been talking about this one for years, um, as you recall. Um, we now have almost completed um, a storage and uh, barn structure. For, um, for a farmer, um, which will eventually be um, put in place there. Um, it's it's a, just a square, 48 by 48 foot square. Um, it's got a small office and a restroom um, with some storage space conditioned. And the rest of it is, um, is unconditioned, uh, but secure area for storage of, of materials and equipment and um, an area to take in um, crops that will eventually be, be, um, be grown there. So that's right at the, it's just outside the historic part of the farm. It's, um, it's as you recall, there's, there's, um, there was some uh, private property that was purchased uh, with houses on them that we've, that we've, updone, that we've uh, upgraded just outside the historic part. And this is just on the edge of the historic part of the farm um, with full access to that historic part with, with, um, with small equipment. Um, you can see that it's coming together pretty well. Okay, this one, this is where the next, this is the discovery. This park um, has a name now. Um, the Board of Commissioners approved official name, Discovery Park at the Riverline. Um, it was, uh, it, it, for several years, we just referred to it by different names, but now it has an official name, so we're happy about that. Um, it's 103 acres of county property along the river along Discovery Boulevard. This project um, disturbs about under an acre and a half to gain access to uh, the river and to um, an incredibly well-preserved woods and um, also were incredibly well-preserved Civil War era earthworks at the top of the ridge. Um, every time I go up there with somebody who's interested in the Civil War part of this project, um, they can't believe how well-preserved and, and, um, and exciting this project will be to, to have the public come in. We have a, a, a parking lot for about 20 cars, a couple of buses, um, for tour groups that might be able to come in, um, a very small restroom, uh, and then the rest of it is interpretive signage and natural surface trails. So we've just gotten started on this. Um, the, the grading you see, I think we, I took this picture um, just a few days ago, um, but they're working fast uh, when it's not raining, and uh, this will be completed in the mid to late fall. Um, and uh, we're really excited about this project. People are going to really like it. It's access to the river. Um, it's, it's pristine woods, um, it's near Nickajack Creek. Uh, we can walk down to the creek and to the river. It's, it's going to be great. Next slide. These are just uh, some notes on additional projects. Um, our, our wayfinding signage and, uh, sorry, our signage and wayfinding designs are, have been approved by the BOC, um, so that we have a graphic, uh, a graphic um, style that we're going to follow, um, large for larger parks and smaller for smaller parks and, and even smaller for things to, to find your way around a park inside the parks. Um, they all follow a, a similar um, scheme. Um, we had a, a wide variety since 1966. We've been building parks and, and, uh, and um, had a, a variety of different signage. We're going to do our best to, um, over the years, install um, a like Type of park so that you see a, a Cobb Park sign, you'll know that it's a Cobb Park. 
Um, and uh, so we have a, 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 the concepts have been approved and we're now um, in the process of our, with our consultants help evaluating different material choices, um, sizes, et cetera, that will um, inform the rest of how we develop and, and, and uh, bring them out into the parks. Um, at Terrell Mill Park, um, we, sorry, I'm still, sorry. Um, Terrell Mill Park, um, we have uh, LED field lighting at the synthetic turf field that's been installed. Um, old Clarkdale Park is under design. The design is nearly complete. We're doing the final reviews of their plans before it goes out to bid, um, probably for construction. Um, it's in permitting now. It'll probably go out to bid in July. The Larry Bell Complex, um, there are, we have four large uh, structures at Larry Bell. We have the Civic Center, the Central Aquatic Center, Genesic Center, and Anderson Theater, all of which can have large crowds in them, all of which, this is almost crazy to say, combine their gravity sewer into a six-inch terracotta pipe as it leaves um, the, the park, the entire complex. Not big enough, old. So we're, um, we're going to be replacing that. We have a design on that. We'll advertise for construction in June. Um, that was a um, kind of a time bomb that um, that we're going to diffuse here fairly quickly. Um, I was speaking before about the general park improvements category. Um, we have 21 pavilions and smaller buildings um, spread around in 10 parks um, that we're going that are out to bid in two packages. Um, those go out to, to bid um, for roof replacements um, uh, or out to bid now, I should say, and um, those bids come in next week. And the art place, which you saw a picture of before, you might recall, it's a kind of an oddly shaped building um, with a roof that was, uh, the building is from the late 90s. Um, it's been a problem. Um, it's a very uh, stubborn roof. We, if a, when a leak develops, it's hard to find it because, uh, you know, things are odd uh, shapes and, and, and slopes. Um, we're replacing that entire roof. The, um, the Board of Commissioners approved that on the 28th of April, and we're working through the contracts uh, now. And that's, that's what I got. Madam Chair, I have a question for Tom. Sure, go ahead. Hey, Tom, the uh, question I've asked over, in fact, I've gotten a little grayer while I've been asking this question about the naming of the buildings and the park system and stuff. We keep saying there's going to be a plan there. Is there anything yet publishable on that? By naming, you mean sponsorship sort of thing? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of money sitting out there for the county, uh, I think, and, and, and I have selfish pieces of that in my head, but naming of the buildings and stuff like that, yes. You know, uh, I, I, I know. I, um, I know you've asked that. Um, and you're not getting grayer. You look terrific. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I don't have it. I, I, I'll ask it. I'll bring that up. Uh, I'm not sure if Jimmy's joined or not. Um, he could answer if he's here. If, uh, otherwise, though, um, I really I don't know. Um, but I can I can find out for you. I'll do my best. Okay, let me know. Thank right. you. Thank you, Jess. Carmen, I have a question. Sure. And I'm, I've had to miss some meetings. I may it may have been presented, but do we have uh, some graphics of what the signs are going to look like? I'm just curious. Um, we do. Um, I can't pull it up right at this moment, but I can certainly um, send it out to um, uh, through uh, April probably, and she'll be able to get it to you. That'd be great. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Any more questions? Hey, good afternoon. This is Lindsay Edwards. Tom, quick question for the roughly 10% of the projects that are in the design and engineering phase. Has the COVID um, reaction, has that impacted any of the design or any of the, those future projects? Uh, luckily, it hasn't. Um, um, it has not. Uh, is that me? There's a little feedback. Okay, um, it hasn't, because um, all of that has been uh, um, either underway, either the things that are underway, um, I guess, let me, let me think about that a little more. Um, it hasn't impacted uh, our getting them completed um, or making progress on existing ones. The, the, our purchasing uh, has slowed down a little bit because, um, you know, the, the, we've had to do these kind of meetings for pre-bids and pre-construction meetings. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of uh, interrupted the flow a little bit. But, um, but not by much, not in a way that, that really has impacted um, our ability to, to keep those things moving. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Any more questions for Parks? 
Okay, thanks everybody. I look forward to seeing you for real sometime soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. Next, we'll hear from DOT. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. We'll, um, we'll start with our next slide and, and we'll just I'll, um, provide a quick update on the 05 program. So um, if you'll go to the next slide, Yolanda, currently we have three projects that are still in the pre-construction or design phase and then two that are, that are in the construction phase. So if you'll, you'll go to the next slide, please. Um, those three projects that are in design phase are going to be Bob Callen Trail Phase 2, which there's no county funding in that project. We're just a um, just a, the liaison and managing the project for the Cumberland CID, um, and it's being funded by Cumberland CID and Georgia DOT. We do have Bells Ferry Road Intersection Improvement, which is Bells Ferry at Turner Dixon, Dixon Road Intersection Improvement, which is scheduled to go to construction um, or to be let June of 2020. And then we, we're also still showing the State Route 92 widening project. Um, that's a GDOT led um, and GDOT funded project, um, but it was named in the 05 SPLOS, so it's, we've just continued to keep that in our, in our slides. Um, but there's no, there's no funding from the county on that project. Construction phase is our um, Big Shanty Road sidewalks, which we are substantially complete. Um, and those were Georgia DOT um, transportation enhancement funds. So we are finishing up that project and then the other project that's in construction um, that's adjacent up there to the city of Ackworth is the State Route 92 widening project and CW Matthews is the contractor for that job and it's being led and was funded by Georgia DOT. So if you can go to the next slide, this is just a highlight of Big Shanty. Um, it was the construction of a 10 foot wide trail or side path on Big Shanty between Chastain Meadows and Bells Ferry Road. Amshev did the, the work for us and, and it was substantially complete May 1st. Okay. So these are some of the outstanding issues for the 05 splice. We wanted to just highlight where we're at in the program. We get, you know, we get a lot of questions on that. So currently um, we have in progress, um, but not completed, we have five projects and it's totaling about $6 million, just a little over $6 million for SPLOS funds. Um, unresolved utility prior rights claims are with Georgia Power and there's around there's four projects just over one million dollars and then we have some we still have some outstanding right-of-way claims and, and condemnations on nine of our projects um, which is a, just a little over eight million dollars so our goal um, we think all of these can be cleaned up by the end of 2022 when we'll be able to close out that 05 program if we can go to the next slide this is um, to talk about our 2011 program and, and we're pretty far along in this program also. If you'll hop over to the next slide, please. We have four projects that are in the design phase and then three that are in construction out of the 210 that were identified. If, um, those are the remaining. Those projects are actually uh, Lower Roswell Road. We hope to go to um, construction summer of 2021 and that one is twinned with our Wood Woodlawn Drive sidewalks um, project. We'll actually um, be having, we'll present that project to the Board of Commissioners for approval of the concept report because it is a fairly expensive project. Um, so we'll be bringing that to the board probably in the next few months to, to um, approve the concept report so we can move forward with that. We submitted to the Atlanta Regional Commission, no, Atlanta Transit Link Authority and the Atlanta Regional Commission for grants for the next two projects. One of those is a transit signal preemption upgrades with the Atlanta Regional Commission and the second one um, would be for the park and ride and the transfer facilities at Cumberland and the Marietta transfer facility. Um, those grants we're hoping to hear in the next probably month if any funding will be allocated to either of those two projects. And then projects that are in our construction phase um, our Gordon Combs Road sidewalks, those should be completed this September. And then we have McCullum Parkway sidewalks, which is um, from Ben King to Olympic Lane, which is scheduled to complete October of 21. And then we have Riverview Road, which is scheduled for completion this December. Okay, so this is just a highlight. We, we closed out. Um, we project was completed in December of 2019 for Sandy Plains. Um, and that was a it was a pretty extensive project, and you know we had a, a few hiccups out there. But and we we installed raised concrete medians, improved pedestrian um, enhancements. But there was some minor widening and resurfacing, but we were able to close that out this um, December of last year. Okay. And then these are our outstanding issues for 2011. 
So we still have 25 projects that are in some phase in this program, um, which is around $20 million, almost $21 million. Um, prior rights for our utilities, is, or we have around nine projects, just over $3 million. And then we still have some outstanding right-of-way claims and condemnations. Um, 14 projects was just, just over $1 million. So we have 36 active projects, and our goal is to be able to complete this program the end of 2024. Okay, so now we'll talk about our 16 program. So this is where we're at, um, actual and planned, when we when we laid out this 2016 program where we thought we would be and where we actually, actually are. So we've actually um, completed 142 of the projects out of the 227 that were identified. So if we can go to the next slide. We have 31 projects that are in design and then 36 that are in construction. And then we have 18 identified projects that, that have yet to be started. If we can go to our next slide. So these are all the projects that we have in design and right of way. Um, you'll see, we can, and then we can hop over to the next slide. So these are our 31, 31 projects. And then our next slide. So these are the projects that are actually in construction and we, we always bold the ones that we want to highlight and show some pictures of, some progress pictures. So we'll highlight Powers Ferry Drive over Rottenwood Creek, Woodland Brook Drive over Bonnings Branch, Ackworth Goo West at Jim Owens, Blackwell at Autumn Ridge, Hicks Road at Concord, and Lost Mountain Road at Midway. And then also the I-20 Eastbound Ramps. Then we'll also have a picture of our new Macklin Road project and we'll talk about our resurfacing jobs. If you can, next slide. Okay. So this is John Ward's sidewalks. Um, we This was the addition of sidewalks to fill in the gaps on the west side of John Ward Road between Macklin and Irwin. Um, Accelero was our construction, and the project was completed in January of this year. Okay, this one is um, Post Oak Tread at Hembury. This project was recently completed in March of 2020. Um, Glosson was our contractor, and this was the construction of a roundabout. We included some enhanced street lighting and pedestrian improvements. This is one of our drainage projects. This is a before and after picture of some work that was completed at Ridgewood Drive. Um, Chatfield was our contractor, and this was completed in March of this year also. Okay. So this is a, a snapshot of Powers Ferry Drive over Rotten Creek. Um, we're replacing um, the bridge replacement with an, um, an 8x8 reinforced concrete triple box culverts. Georgia Bridge and Concrete is our contractor out there. Um, it's the summer of 2020 road closure, which we, we have in place, and then it's hopefully our completion will be later this fall. Okay, our next one is Woodland Brook Drive over Gilmore Creek. This is a bridge replacement project. Um, we're replacing the bridge with a double 10 by 11 concrete box culvert. CMES is our contractor. Um, we have a road closure on this one also, and our hope is that this project will be completed this September. Okay. Next, we have our roundabout project at Ackworth Due West at Jim Owens Road. Um, this was the removal of an always stop condition. It's we're installing a roundabout. Um, is we're installing a right turn lane for Lewis Elementary School and then also some additional enhanced pedestrian improvements. And our scheduled completion on this project is spring of 2021. Okay. Then this is Blackwell Road at Autumn Ridge Parkway. This was another always stop removal. We um, improved the sight distance at this location and added turn lanes and enhanced pedestrian improvements. And this was scheduled to be completed this year and we recently removed the always stop through this intersection. Okay. So this is Hicks Road at Concord Road. So this is just to say operational improvement. We're adding turn lanes. Um, there's a signal modification, drainage improvements, and some pedestrian improvements. And this should be completed spring of 21. This one is um, Lost Mountain Road at Midway Road, Mirror Lake Drive. This is another safety and operational intersection improvement. We are realignment of the intersection of Lost Mountain and Midway, creating a four-way signalized intersection. Um, and then we're adding turn lanes. So this should be completed this um, December. 
This next one is down close to Six Flags and it's the I-20 eastbound ramps at Riverside Parkway. Um, this is a congestion relief and mobility improvement project. Mm -hmm. We realign South Services Drive or in the process. Um, we're adding a traffic signal, turn lanes and pedestrian improvements and this should be completed um, spring of 21. And then this last project is um, on New Macklin Road and it's a safety and operational improvement between Arifo Drive and Macklin Road. There's minor widening, we're adding turn lanes, replacing some storm drainage and, and pedestrian improvement out there. And that's scheduled to be completed spring of 2022. And lastly, we're gonna talk about our um, 2020 resurfacing. So we have all three of our resurfacing contracts were recently awarded. Um, the 2020-1 Countywide Thoroughfares Elming projects included, um, the contract amount was $11 million to Baldwin and it includes 17 roads or 26 miles of roads and resurf resurfacing began in April of this year. Then we have our 2020-2 local road, road south, which is just under $5 million. Um, Blount Construction received that award and it's 80 roads at just over 19 miles of roadways. Um, resurfacing began in May, and then we have 2022-3 local roads north, which is just um, 5.76 million. Bartow Paving received that award, and there's 85 roads with not almost 20 miles of roadway, and um, resurfacing is scheduled to begin this June. Okay, so this is our next quarter planned activities. We'll um, hopefully have 12 projects to be completed, five construction new starts, and then seven projects that will be in the, the design or engineering phase. Okay. Now that was quick. That's that was great, Erica. Thank you. Thanks. Are there any questions for Erica? No questions? You must have done a great job. You did great. Thank you. Madam <laughs> Chairman. Ms. Booker, yes. I do have one quick question. Erica, okay. the, um, the timeline on those 2005 projects uh, that are still outstanding, I noticed some of them are issues related to right-of-way and the power company. I know there are some state laws that govern right-of-way issues as they pertain to public utilities. Is that what we're running into on those kind of things? Or I'm thinking we're 15 years out now and we're still talking about two more years. Can you can you educate me a little bit on that? Yeah, so some of some of that is it's it's the research that has to go into verifying who who was there first, um, and then some of the state laws also. So we we feel we feel really good about where we're at and the conversations that we're having with Georgia Power. Um, I know it's still two years out, um, but we we think by that time we'll have all of that that cleaned up. We'll have all the research completed and have been able to sit down and you know, have those conversations and have decided, you know, yes or no, and, and just be able to, to be able to close those out. And I, and I take it that's the same basic situation that you're looking at on the 2011 plus where you're having some right away issues there too. It is, it is. So, um, it is it just takes, it takes a lot of time on those. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Anybody have any further questions? A comment for Erica. Sure. Uh, I'm concerning the bridge over Noses Creek in Macedonia. We finally got enough rain earlier this year where it would have normally flooded. Not only did the bridge not flood, I noticed that upstream the, the creek did a better job of staying in its banks, I suppose, because the bridge is less we're restricting the flow. Uh, so, uh, the neighborhood people are happy. Oh, good. We hope so. There was there was a lot that went in that 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 was a that that poor project had a lot of issues at a, at some point. So I appreciate you saying that. Anybody else have any questions or comments? All right. Thank you, Erica. Um, our last item is other business, and um, Dr. McMorris is on our call, and I just want to congratulate her on becoming our county manager, and we look forward to working with you on SPLOST 
going forward. And with that in mind, um, the commissioners have revised their list for the um, upcoming SPLOST vote. And I will be sending that out to you all this afternoon. And I believe Dr. McMorris had a couple of things she wanted to share with us. Thank you, Alice. Thank all of you for participating in the call. Uh, I appreciate all that you do. Uh, yes, we did reduce the, what we thought the revenue collections would be from 135 million annually to 125. We got that number from the 08 recession and we thought let's be fiscally prudent and conservative in terms of what we think we might be able to collect. So that being said, we went back to the commissioners and asked them to reduce by $3 million of the 11.25 million that they had for community impact projects. They did so willingly. And then we also reduced a little bit in DOT. So what we did though, is just reprioritize those projects and put them in latter years of the SPLOS. So they will be what some people may call our tier two projects, even though we don't have tiers, they would be those first projects that the board would and the cities would uh, fund uh, with revenue above projection. Uh, if if we're so fortunate that we can collect revenue above projection in the next floss, and we feel very uh, optimistic and, and hopeful about that. That being said, the board will uh, hopefully approve uh, the SPLOS going on a referendum uh, on Tuesday along with the booklet of projects. So when you see the, the email that Alice is going to send you, those are the projects that the board will be considering next Tuesday. If you have any questions between uh, now and then or after they vote on it, we feel free to email us. We'd be happy to answer those. And I know that we will be holding some public hearings as well on the list. In addition, I want to say June 17th and 18th will be our two virtual open houses. You all may recall we had about 18 or 19 scheduled uh, open houses for SPLOS and then comes COVID-19. We got four in the books. So on the 8th, 17th and 18th of June, we hope to have uh, virtual open houses for the public to be able to share their feedback and get questions answered. So we appreciate all of your support. Great. Thank you for that update. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions or comments for Dr. McMorris? Uh, Madam Chairman, this is Berkeley. Um, I have a question because I just dealt with this for a client. How are we going to do outreach so people know to participate with all the other noise out and Ross may be choking me at this point, uh, with all the other noise out there? Yeah. For seeing it more important. And I know we do a good job with our newsletter, but didn't know if we were doing anything else that would help bring people out. I mean, I know personally, I'm on a civic club board, I'm going to send it out, but we're not an HOA. So I think there are groups out there because that might be missed. Or might not be um, able to get to a computer. And so I'm wondering how we're addressing those issues. Absolutely. Great question. Thank you for asking. So, uh, as you know, we can only educate and we need um, organizations to help us advocate. So, what we're doing is we are going to do some storyboarding. We're working on that next week and we're pushing that out. The chamber uh, is also going to be helping us to push it out to such organizations like HOAs and um, uh, other associations, including uh, business and community associations or, or CIDs and all of that are on board and ready to help. So what we're, what we're going to do is try to, uh, we've also elicited the help of Croft and Associates as well to kind of help us with telling the story. So. Our biggest concern is trying to be very sensitive to um, what's going on within our communities. It is very difficult to ask someone um, to continue to renew a SPLOS in the midst of them having lost their jobs, needing food, uh, trying to you know clothe their children. Just their whole lives have been turned upside down. So one of the reasons we haven't been out there doing a whole lot as of yet is we really are sensitive to that. So the, the message will be um, designed in such a way that we're, we're asking people to continue something they're already doing. We understand your concerns. 
We're going to promote that it is a DOT squad, that there's very little of anything coming out of the ground, brick and mortar. And so uh, we ask them to trust us. Uh, we're going to, we're pushing um, probably $50 million out there to uplift small businesses from our CARES Act funding. Uh, we're trying to help nonprofits. We're trying to help them in, in the um, shelter and eviction space as well. So with all of that, you will probably start seeing something in the next uh, week or so uh, from a um, marketing firm that the chamber has hired to help educate and advocate for the SPLOS, as well as we're going to be taking people's questions and concerns online and answering their questions and taking their calls. Um, any way we can get feedback out there, anything you all can do, any suggestions that you have, we're open to that. Um, so probably some radio marketing. I'm not sure about uh, TV, but we are billboards, those kinds of things. We have to do some grassroots stuff as well. But we are trying to be very sensitive to the fact that right now that is not top of mind for everybody. The other thing we have to think about is whether or not you know, we wanted to wait and, and the board decided that we did not want to compete with the, the East Bloss, which is coming up in 21. And then the proposed, perhaps we don't know what things are going to be, um, transit referendum as a result of House Bill 930 and House Bill 170, where we can actually use uh, the funds to look at transit options. So one of the reasons the board is looking at this now is because we did not want to have competing SPLOS uh, going at the same time. It's a, it's, this is a really tough uphill um, battle for us because we don't want people to think that it's not important. And don't go vote and certainly go vote and not put yes, push the yes button on spots. So open to ideas from you guys. Certainly want you all out there helping us as much as you can as well. Thank you so much for that. I'm sorry to me speak of you. I just excellent strategy in the way of laying out the um the planning for the various asks to the community thank you Absolutely. thank you welcome any other comments or questions for dr mcmorris all right well if you have any suggestions of ways to get the word out and help with participation and support please let me or Dr. McMorris know, and um, we will let you know about our meeting in July, if that will be virtual or live. So y'all take care, and um, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.